Different mechanical vehicles have surely helped lighten up processes in a lot of industries, but these vehicles will not work without the complex and intricate parts that make them. One of the most important parts of a car or a machine is the oil filter, yet it's not commonly mentioned. Most of the time, this is located beside the oil pan or under the hood of your vehicle. If you look for it near the engine, you will definitely see it. An oil filter is responsible for filtering out various impurities. They're important in making sure that the dirt in used engine oil is not fed into the machine. Without them, the oil quality will go down and the engine might get damaged too. Hello and welcome back to Lord Gizmo! In today's video, we'll be talking about oil filters. You'll get to know how they're made, how they function, and their importance. But before that, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more related content. Basically, an oil filter is used to clean the oil that goes through the engine. This is essential in protecting the engine from unwanted damages. But how does it specifically function? Well, the engine runs using motor oil. This oil will be circulated throughout the vehicle's engine. It goes through a lot of parts, and it's unavoidable that along the way it picks up dirt, grit, and even metal shavings. This is very normal, but it needs to be dealt with accordingly. If not managed properly, the contaminants can get trapped or kept in suspension. This in turn makes the oil thicker. This forces the engine to work double time since it's dealing with a thicker substance. If not detected and dealt with earlier, it can cause a lot of problems with the engine's fuel economy and puts unnecessary wear and tear on it. To prevent this from happening, oil filters are used. When the motor is not in use, motor oil either stays in the oil pan or has a very brief rest window in the pan. An oil pump draws up the motor oil and sends it through the oil filter before it runs back through the engine. Prior to being redirected back into the engine for usage, pollutants like dirt, sludge, and big particles are filtered out of the motor oil as it passes through the filter's pleated folds or media. Oil filters have a finite lifespan, just like engine oil. The filter will eventually become so full of particles that it will no longer be able to hold onto it anymore, and pressure will begin to build up. The bypass valve in the filter will open up as a result of the pressure rise, allowing unfiltered oil to continue flowing through the engine and preventing oil starvation. It is advised to change your oil on a regular basis and update your oil filter at the same time to maintain optimal engine performance. There are also different types of oil filters, and here are some of them. A. Spin-on filter. This particular sort of filter has an element that is housed in a steel casing that has threads for attaching it to the engine directly. The spin-on filter has several benefits, including an extremely high level of structural durability and an easy replacement procedure. There's almost little chance of introducing contaminants into the engine oil system when changing the spin-on filter. B. Oil filter elements. They're fixed inside sealed housings that are a part of the engine. Typically, housings contain all the valves required for optimal filter functioning in the engine oil system as well as the components necessary to position the filter element in a way that ensures the housing's tightness. Metal components are not used in the manufacturing of contemporary oil filter elements. These filters' cores and bottom caps are composed of contemporary polymers. It's easy to dispose of and better for the environment because there are less metal components. Now that you know the basics of an oil filter, it's important that you know how they're made too. The next parts of the video will be talking about the whole manufacturing process of oil filters. This will be divided into parts, and let us go into them by one by one. Step number one, tracing the steel sheet. Normally, oil filters are circular in shape. The first step into making them is tracing along the steel sheet. The workers have to draw out circles in the sheet and have to make sure that they are identical so that the next step will become easier and smoother. Step number two, cutting of the steel sheets. After the tracing, the steel sheet will be transferred to a machine that will cut the outline out. As the steel sheet passes through the cutting machine, it will cut it into specific sizes. The machine will also be responsible for smoothing out the edges of the circles. In other sources, the thickest parts of the threaded plates need to be cut from a 2mm thick sheet while the tapping plates, outer casing, and the upper end cover are cut from a sheet of thickness between 0.25 and 0.5mm. After the sheets are cut, they'll undergo the process of stamping. In summary, this step involves three processes like the steel sheet blanking, extraction of the outer casing, and stamping of the base plate and the end cap of the filter element. In this stage, most of the metallic parts of the filter need to be made. 
Some of the manufacturing companies use the machine 100T-300T automatic press. An automatic press machine with a capacity of 100 tons to 300 tons is a kind of metalworking machinery used for a variety of industrial tasks like punching, bending, and stamping. These devices are made to automate the rapid and very precise forming and shaping of metal components. They typically include a control system, a set of dies and tools coupled to a movable ram, and a hydraulic or electric power supply. The 100T-300T automatic press machines are renowned for their rapid cycle times, automatic feeding and ejection of parts, adjustable stroke and force management, and safety features including emergency stop buttons and safety fences. They're also renowned for their great precision in forming and shaping metal components. They're responsible for producing the various metal parts of the filter. To satisfy the demands of various production kinds, they also deploy a dozen 50-200T punching machines to boost production capacity and output. Now let's get into the three processes in this step. Depending on the size and specifications of the product, a circular steel sheet is stamped one to two times to create the oil filter housing. After preliminary shaping, extra metal is removed to create a clean body. The canister is finalized by being painted and printed in accordance with customer specifications. Painting is not done only to make things look better, but it also helps to keep things from rusting. Looking at the base plate, you'll see that it's made up of a tapping plate and a bottom ring. The tapping plate needs to be threaded after the process of stamping. To do this, it needs to be put under an automatic threading machine. For creating string outlines, which are typically seen in pipes that are used for various applications, an automatic pipe threading machine is employed. The thread designs facilitate the pipe's bolting and connection to the major components. After that, it's put in the automatic spot welder together with the bottom ring and welded together to form the base plate. In this stage, the filter element and end caps are stamped and made using an automatic punching machine. Metal end cap filters are cylindrical cartridge filters with an end cap that are developed for usage in challenging settings. They're made of sturdy materials that, when combined with unique potting solutions, can survive high temperature settings. For the next part, the bypass valve will be riveted to the bottom end caps of the filter element. For this, a worker loads the bottom end caps, springs, and die into the automatic riveting machine. The task of the riveting the lower end cap assembly is completed by the machine. Basically, the riveting process is a semi-permanent and non-thermal joining method. This most of the time involves a mechanical fastener and rivet that helps join the sheet metal parts. Drilling a hole and inserting a rivet into two sheet metal components is the riveting process. After that, the making of the center tube starts. This will start with cutting the sheet metal into the specified size. The cut tin-plated steel sheets are then rolled into tubes by another machine that peripherates them. These are the completed center tubes, and they're prepared to be put into the pleated paper core as part of the following step in the creation of the filter. Step number four, oil filter element. Before we go into the process, let's get first get to know what an oil filter element is. Basically, this is the part responsible for removing the impurities, such as carbon residue and metal particles, from engine oil. Oil filter elements are utilized for water oil separation activities and also increase the life of hydraulic systems. Stainless steel is typically used as the raw material for oil filter elements during the sintered, knitted, or woven processes. Stainless steel fiber sintering, medium or mesh, or stainless steel wire mesh is a typical finished product. Now, in making this, things like the paper for pleating and the element itself needs to be prepared. It's also divided into different, smaller steps. Let's go over them. Take note that in order to ensure the consistency of the products and outputs, all of these processes are done with the help of a machine. In this part, the machine needs to prepare the paper or the sheet needed first. It's important that the paper is made into a size that is perfect for fit for the canister. To ensure that the demands are met, there will be workers and operators who will oversee the whole process. They're assigned to adjust the width, height, and number of folds on the folding machine. They need to do this according to what is demanded and have to do everything by the book. The machine's job is to only automatically fold and pleat the paper. After that process, the next one will immediately start. The pleated paper ribbon needs to be cut and they mostly do this according to set lengths. Each component is compressed into a cylindrical shape and the ends are clipped together. The center tube must be properly positioned into the paper core as the first stage in the assembling procedure. 
these talented employees, who have a relentless devotion to detail, complete this painstaking process with the highest precision. They secure the final product's stability and structural integrity by carefully inserting the central tube. The complex procedure of bundling the tangled filter paper starts when the center tube has been flawlessly inserted into the paper core. This is a crucial step where careful attention to detail is needed to ensure that the filter paper is positioned and distributed evenly throughout the core. These hardwalking employees skillfully handle the knotted threads, making sure every strand is exactly aligned for maximum filtration effectiveness. In order to guarantee that the filter paper is completely encased, a rubber band, selected for its strong elasticity, is systematically looped around the center. The filter paper is firmly held in place by this straightforward yet efficient mechanism, avoiding any possible deviation or movement during the ensuing manufacturing procedures. The gluing of the end caps is an important stage in the production of filter elements. Here, an automatic glue injection machine takes center stage, effectively covering the inside surfaces of the end caps with adhesive. This gets the end caps ready for the joining step later on, when they will be firmly fixed to the filter paper. An experienced operator controls the procedure to provide a trustworthy bond. The worker carefully adheres the filter paper to the top and bottom end caps. After those processes, the bonded paper core needs to be transferred into the curing oven. This will stay in for some time so that it can fully cure. Step number five, oil filter assembling. The base plate, the anti-drain back valve, and the filter element are aligned by a qualified worker to start the production process. The support spring is then added to provide stability and structural integrity. The filter canister is then put together and perfectly synchronized. The last steps entail guiding the filter edges inward and folding them to create an impeccable rim using a sophisticated seamer machine. This procedure seals the filter unit, guaranteeing its effectiveness and quality. The assembly's stability and structural integrity are ensured by the worker's accuracy and dexterity throughout the procedure. The highest quality and functionality of the filter assembly are guaranteed by this painstaking procedure. Step number six, oil filter testing. As soon as the filter's parts are carefully put together, the oil filter testing procedure starts. The constructed filter is then deftly placed on a specifically designed test bench to expertly attached to an air outlet. Then with precision, a water tank is elevated to wrap the air filter in a soft cascading flow of water with the smooth opening of an ingeniously constructed air valve maintaining the proper pressure. The filter is rigorously inspected under these controlled conditions for a period longer than 15 seconds with the highest attention to detail. During this crucial stage, a quality inspector does a detailed visual inspection, carefully looking for any indications of bubbles or anomalies in the water surrounding the filter. The lack of bubbles indicates that the product satisfies strict criteria, which attests to its outstanding quality. On the other hand, the existence of any bubbles is a sign that the filter does not fulfill the necessary requirements and has to be given more thought and revised. The filter is left wet after passing this thorough visual inspection, so it's vital to notice. So that it can function at its best, it has to go through a rigorous drying process to get rid of any moisture that might still be there. The filters can confidently move on to the packaging phase once they are totally dry and moisture free, ready to be sent and used for their intended purpose. It's important to note that the drying process is not set necessary if you're using a dry side leaker for testing reasons, because the filter will naturally remain dry during the evaluation. Step number seven, packaging the finished oil filter. This step of the process is divided into different parts. Here are some of them. Basically, the stenciling technique known as silk screen printing involves utilizing a mesh screen and ink to transfer a design onto fabric. Although the method and results are generally the same, it's occasionally referred to as silk screening or other similar variations. Once the filters have passed tests, they will immediately be transferred to an automatic screen printing machine for automatic silk screen printing. A conveyor belt transports the screen printed filter into an oven where the screen printing ink is dried. Now that the silk screen printing and drying are complete, the process of coating will be done. The product will be transferred to an automatic inkjet printer for automatic coating from the conveyor belt. Since the oil filter is made with steel or metal, this stage is very important. As soon as the filter is ready for anti-rust oil treatment, it will be automatically moved from the conveyor belt to the automatic oil equipment. In order to automatically apply the plastic film, the operator passes the filter into the automatic film machine. And there you have it, folks. That's the process of making an oil filter. If you want to know more, you can check out our video on powerful machines and amazing inventions that you need to see. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring the world of construction machinery.